This is a remote one. Snowfall is picking up. Not looking forward to putting on the frozen boots. But that's okay. Got to do it sometime. What's this one? Ah, that one's a little harder. here. I guess we'll park over here. Hey everybody, Syntax 77 here. It is winter. I'm about 30 miles from the Canadian border on the tippy top portion of New Hampshire. About to do some winter hammock camping and uh, I think I made it to my destination. I'm at the Berlin fish hatchery and uh well let's turn the jeep off and uh see what it's like out there it's uh 22 degrees apparently it's december i think it's gonna go down probably single digits but luckily not into the below zero mark i think wind chill below zero but regular temp not quite so much so that's good it feels pretty good out here right now Although I've only been here a minute, but I'm about to do three days and two nights of some hammock camping. We'll get into the gear later. I have my Amok Dramar, which is kind of my uh, luxury hammock camping hammock, if you will. Um, so that'll be fun. This will be the first time I've taken that out on a winter trip. We'll see how that goes for those of you interested. But yeah, here I am. This is about the most remote section of the White Mountains. Now we've got some buildings over there for the fish hatchery. That gate right there, apparently they're open from eight till four, but they closed that. So I gotta get my bearings and look at my map, but somewhere around here is a trailhead, uh, the Millbrook Trail. We're gonna hike in about five miles and there's a pond called Unknown Pond. Gonna set up a base camp there, hit some summits and have a little fun in the woods. So I should probably get some pants on that aren't denim. Unfortunately, uh, well, I make a mistake on every one of these trips. And this time around, hopefully this is my mistake for the trip and not the alternative, which would be a foreshadowing of a bunch of unfortunate events to come. But I have my hiking pants and my long johns in a nice neat pile folded up uh, by my bed in my bedroom at home and uh, they are still there at home. So I hit a Walmart and <laughs> I grabbed a cheap pair of hiking pants, which unfortunately I had some nice new prototypes from Outdoor Vitals that I was gonna wear, but I'll have to do that on another trip. But I just bought some uh, thermal underwear. I'll put those on. And uh, I even got some gloves because I was there. <sighs> and uh, some Wranglers. So I'll put that on with my hard shells which I did remember, thankfully, my military uh, Gen 3 extreme cold weather pants right there. I'm gonna put those on and my top shell from EMS that I've had for many, many years. Bunch of monsters. Now here's one decision I have to make as well, is whether or not to bring these. <sighs> now, because of the more remote area that I'm in, I'm by pretty much the northernmost uh, 4,000 footer in the whites here, Mount Cabo or Cabo, however you say it. Uh, because it's such a lesser traveled area, I have not gotten uh, any recent trail reports. So some parts of the White Mountains require snowshoes right now because of the drifts and higher snow um, depths, and some don't. Right now, I'm kind of on the borderline. I'm thinking I might leave the snowshoes behind and save myself four pounds, but uh, that's the decision I have to make. But I'm leaning towards maybe leaving them here. But anyway, right now, I need to get some boots and some pants on, get my pack out, which is right here, and uh, get on the trail. So let's get to it. Right. 
Hard shell is on. Bottom and top. Leaving the Jeep behind. And here we go. So, this is the uh, gate. They closed us at four o'clock, as you can see by the sign. So that's why we're gonna park on the other side of it. Now, I'm gonna go in for three days. So I think that means about a half mile extra of hiking on the road here. Unfortunately, because of my little uh, uh, shopping debacle for my clothing, um, it's midday and the days are short right now because it is December. So <laughs> I have four hours until sunset. That ain't much at all. So we're gonna get right into it. I see a little info board up here. We'll see what that looks like. New Hampshire Fish and Game Department. So they're covered up right now, I assume for the uh, winter, but these are little pods where they uh, breed trout. And that's how they stock a lot of the ponds and rivers and brooks throughout New Hampshire, uh, right from here. So we're gonna go right up this way towards Millbrook Trail, get off of this pavement and into the woods. Alright, here we go. A little uh, windy today, hence the below zero wind chill forecast. I did ultimately decide to leave the snowshoes behind. We'll see if that bites me in the butt or not. So far, just a few inches on the ground. We finally got some tracks, but they're not human. Looks like probably rabbit. Two in the back, one in the front there. It's a mild uphill grade. This uh, trail isn't too bad, but with the snow, slippery conditions, makes it a little more interesting, but pretty chill. No uh, blazes so far either, but uh, I think we're going to follow this brook for a little bit. Snow's getting a little deep. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't really know where the trail is right now. But what I do know for sure, from looking at the top of the map, is that it follows this brook for a couple miles. So I'm just basically following the water, hugging that, keeping it on my left side, and moving along. Uh, that sun's getting low too. <sighs> Only have a couple hours of uh, daylight left. So, whether or not we get to camp and have daylight to set up or not, I, I'm not sure. But, we'll find out. We'll just keep trudging along. Try not to sink into the snow too much. So far, I'm not too disappointed in my lack of snowshoes, but the summit trip tomorrow might be a little, a little deep based on what I got down here. And lower elevation but that's all right i did bring some poles from cnock outdoors they're uh, vertex carbon i think they're a carbon fiber kind of deal and they have not let me down yet as you can see they fold down into three sections so they're nice and small they're light 
forget exactly how light, but they're lighter than my black diamonds, which cost three times as much. So that's cool. And uh, just undo them. Uh-oh. <laughs> Maybe I spoke too soon. I just overextended it, which was my fault, I suppose. But, uh, oh boy. I don't know what to do with that. Now I just got this wire hanging out the other end. Huh. All right, well, I'll definitely be using one pole, I guess. I'll try to be careful with this one. But anyway, <laughs> I'll deal with that at camp. I got about an hour of daylight now. It is really slow going in this snow and not knowing where the trail is. Let me see if I can get this guy going. Lock him in the place. Oh, same thing on the other side. Oh, Lord. All right, well. <sighs> Maybe the cold weather is making me not think correctly, but I think I just disassembled both of my hiking poles. All right, well, anyway. <sighs> like I was saying, it's, uh, it's cold. I don't know where the trail is. I got an hour of daylight or less and uh, it's steep. So <laughs> I'm gonna apparently bail on both my hiking poles for now, or maybe try to fix that. But I'm gonna get up on this ridge, keep following the brook. I don't know if I'm gonna make it to the pond or not, I'll be honest. Um, at this point, I'm a few miles in. Even if I have to stop a couple miles short of where I wanted to base camp, I might do that. Um, I don't really wanna set up or break down, set up and you know do that twice. But if I have to, I will, because I do want some time to actually relax at camp. And uh, I am running out of light. Whew. And it's cold, but that's all right. So I am going to head that way, follow the brook, and see if I can't find some camp. Five minutes till sunset. It's getting a little blue out here, light-wise. The snow's getting deep too. Kind of wish I had snowshoes back there. I think this is normally a pretty marshy area and it's uh, collecting a lot of snow. But as of right now, um, not really in the mood for night hiking. I got time on my side. I got two more days or yeah, two days, two nights to go. So, I'm gonna scout around and get away from the trail and the water, but stay relatively close to the water because I'm gonna need to drink that and use it to cook. But uh, I'm gonna look for somewhere flat in here and just set up my hammock and uh, perhaps it won't be a base camp situation. We'll probably uh, pack it up in the morning and keep moving. Uh, and then maybe tomorrow we'll set up early and then go to a summit or something like that. I don't know, we'll play it by ear. We got, uh, we got options, it's the first day. So right now, just gonna take a look around. I think this'll do it. We're losing light quick. Sunset has officially passed. So we're just getting some civil twilight right now. It's nice to get this pack off. The snow up here on this ridge is a little more consolidated, so I'm not sinking in, which is good. Whew, I get cold when I stop moving, that's for sure. I got some extra uh, layers of clothing in my backpack. I actually have a synthetic pair of sweatpants that I'll probably layer on. But for now, I'm, I'm gonna be moving around a little bit because I'm gonna look for somewhere to set up. I just need a good pair of trees, and, uh, and then I'll start uh, uh, heating up some water and doing some uh, meals. I said on a video a couple couple videos ago, I had a bunch of mountain house meals that I was eating my way through before I ordered some more packet gourmet. So, got one right there. Got like a chili mac and beef. I think a beef stroganoff. This is actually biscuits and gravy that actually gonna be my breakfast tomorrow probably. I got ramen noodles and stuff like that, but for right now I just wanna find some trees. I got my piece of tie back here. Now a lot of times I use this if I'm sleeping on the ground. This is a six foot piece of Tyvek. I think it's tucked under on the end there. But for right now, that's gonna be my staging area. I can throw all my stuff from my pack as I kind of unload it and find stuff here. 
like my big old fluffy zero degree quilt. I can put it right there, uh, it doesn't roll away. And uh, that'll keep my stuff dry. And then later on, I'll pull that Tyvek underneath of the uh, hammock and the tarp and I can have somewhere to stand when I'm getting changed and not get my feet wet and all that stuff. But as you can see, it is getting pretty dark. I got my headlamp on right now, my Olight Wave. I don't think I have it in wave mode, but uh, I'll turn that on in a second, hold on. There we go. I like this for the winter because when I'm wearing gloves, I don't want to fiddle with the buttons. So I can just wave my hand in front of it and it'll uh, turn it on and off. I find that nice. So right now, like I said, I'm just going through here, pulling my stuff out. You can see the blinking light over there. I sent a message to my wife on the uh, spot messenger, let her know that I'm okay and this is where I'm camping. And actually the more I think about it, I'm not that far from the pond. I think this might be my base camp. I mean, I'll decide, um, let me turn that off. I'll decide uh, tomorrow morning, but I mean, the time that it's gonna take to sh close down camp, pack everything up, get on the trail, and I'll be moving slower because of all the weight on my back and there is some deep snow drifts around here. I think this um, would be a good idea. Maybe just stay here and um, we'll go to the summits from here tomorrow. It's an extra couple miles, but I won't have to break down and set up camp all over again because I'm coming back tomorrow night and spending the night as well. So we'll see. Um, but enough uh, jibber jabber out of me. I'm gonna continue to uh, unpack my bag. And I think these two trees right here are gonna be perfect. I'll set up my hammock and then I'll start heating up some water with my stove. I do have my, um, like a year or so ago, like I did a whole video where I did a lot of testing in the snow, I'll link to it, where I went over my Optimus um, multi-fuel stove. So I won't get into that too much, but if you wanna know more about it, you can check out that video, I'll link it above. But that's what I'm gonna use with some white gas right there, which um, works plenty good in the um, single digits or zero degree temps that I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna use that to heat up some water. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty darn sure those trees are going to work just fine. So I might start heating up some water now just so I can have some dinner uh, rehydrating while I set up camp because I am getting quite hungry. Huh. All right, so dinner and hammock set up. And then uh, probably be an early bedtime. It's just about hiker midnight. <laughs> it's only like what? Let's see here. Uh, 4.36. Sunset was 4 o'clock. That's how it is up here in December. All right. Got a little ramen noodle going, that'll be my appetizer. I'm gonna make a mountain house for dinner, but uh, we'll let this kind of heat up while I set up my hammock. And uh, that'll get me a little heat, hydration, and calories. Then I'll set up the hammock. And uh, once that's done, I'll make some dinner and uh, hit the hay. Everybody. Oh. Slept pretty good. Oh. Somehow I didn't set an alarm and somehow I slept till like 8.15. I've been laying here reluctant to put my frozen boots back on. But the uh, Amok hammock did pretty good. Uh, the lowest temp I saw last night was like 11 o'clock. I think it was 14 on it. Or pardon me. <laughs> lowest temp I saw was 11 degrees. I think it was 14 degrees when I went to bed. Uh, the pad that comes with this amok that I'm laying on right there uh, is rated down to 20 degrees. So 
I at least pushed it five or six degrees beyond that and I feel pretty good. Now I do have the zero degree quilt on top and uh, I wore a hat while I was sleeping. Although I used this guy, my big <laughs> Russian style uh, babushka hat there, whatever you want to call it. Um, I used that as a pillow. I didn't even actually put it on. That would have maybe kept me warmer. Um, there's a little bit of a breeze up on this ridge. So probably would have been smarter if I pitched the tarp down on an angle to cut that breeze off. But despite that, I slept good. Um, I'll check my thermometer on my pack and see what the low last night was. But I at least got down to a... Uh, the mid-teens and I did pretty good so now I just gotta get up I got all my stuff underneath of here and uh, like I said I think I'll leave this as a base camp and just do a four mile out and back once I convince myself to get out of this here uh, super comfy hammock oh, not looking forward to putting on the frozen boots but that's okay Got to do it sometime. I feel like my hammock's pitched a little low because of the slope that I'm on. But it'll make it easy to get out of, that's for sure. Yeah, this feel, this feel a little crunchy. Not too bad. I've definitely had worse. It actually went on pretty easy. What's this one? Ah, that one's a little harder. Come on. Let those thaw out a little bit more before I bother lacing them up. But there's the Amok. Now I showed that pretty extensively in my hammock camping in the rain video. So if you want more info on that and really see the details of setting it up and everything, you can check that video out. I'll link it up in the top here. But same hammock I used down in Virginia in the rain. Got it here in the snow. And uh, the basics of it, it hangs obviously in between two trees. I got the matching tarp and I inflate a sleeping pad. And there's a zipper here that I undo and I slide the sleeping pad in that gives it all the structure. Me personally, I just use the little straps. They have straps in here that you can pull to adjust the head end and the foot end as well. You can even put it in chair mode. So for me, that worked just fine last night with my body weight. I was laying pretty level. Uh, you can tell from the tarp, didn't have any precipitation. There's supposed to be some snow in the forecast today and tomorrow. Just some flurries, or well, actually, I think maybe an inch or two, two inches, something like that. We'll see what we get here. We'll also see how I do today without snowshoes. Um, that stuff I was trudging through last night, hopefully that was just a pocket down in that marshy area down there. Um, I imagine there'll be some drifts up on the summit. Um, besides Cabo, there's also uh, something called the Horn and the Bulge, which will be on the way to it. The Horn is supposed to actually have the best views. I think he's 3,900 feet, a little lower than Cabo, but um, apparently better views. So that'd be nice. Now, I don't know if it's going to be overcast or foggy or socked in or whatnot, what kind of views we'll get when we're up there, but should be a good time. Right now, I think I'm going to kick up the stove and make some coffee and then i got a little packable pack in my backpack that i'll take with me like a day pack and i'll throw some food in that and get on the road or the trail i should say but first things first let's make a little coffee all right so got my stove set up here water i heated it up last night poured it in here pretty hot just a little below boiling maybe a simmer um, and put it in one of my organizing shelves in the Amok Jamar hammock over there. That's the XL model, by the way. It's a little bigger. Um, nice and roomy. But anyway, um, put it right in one of the shelves and um, didn't even sleep with it. That could have kept me warmer, but like I said, I did pretty good last night, so I just left it on the shelf. And uh, it's not frozen yet. A couple chunks of ice in there, but nothing too bad. This is my 40 below bottle. 
has a nice grippy top on there that's easy to open with gloves. You give it a couple of whacks on a tree. If it's stuck, it usually comes out. And these bottles are a little more flexible than the Nalgene bottles. So you can beat them up a little bit more. But I'm just going to pour that in there and get some coffee going. But first things first, we got to light this stove. Now, like I was saying yesterday, it's white gas. And I did a whole, a whole separate video where I talked a lot about stoves. But what was a little tricky for me last night was... So normally, you just... Uh, well, let me flip it over into the on position. Give it a couple pumps. And normally, all you got to do is open the valve for like a half a second or a second and you can see or i can see a little bit of fuel whoop a lot of fuel probably too much comes out into the priming cup and then i light that uh base there with my zippo but my zippo is giving me some problems i know it's it's full i kept it in a, a ziploc bag i even had it wrapped in ceram wrap so i knew it wouldn't evaporate and dry out but it's uh not lighting for me, and I've certainly used a Zippo in colder temps than this. I usually like a Zippo instead of a Bic, which I have as well, um, because it works better in cold temps, and you can just hold it, and the flame keeps going without holding your thumb there and burning your thumb off, but that wasn't working for me. But that's okay. What I figured out last night, I always carry a little striker like this, and um, you can just strike it to light, but the problem is the priming cup's on the bottom, so hitting it with this doesn't really work too well. So what I did was, I have a little spare bottle of fuel that I've marked pretty plainly to make sure I know it's fuel, not water. And um, what I did was put a little, now this is gonna be a fireball, but put a little drip on the top there. And that should spark up enough to light the priming cup on the bottom. And then it'll heat up and I can turn the fuel on and we'll get going. There we go. So now I got my fireball. Put this over here, make sure I don't lose it, my striker. Once that settles down and the fuel tube is nice and hot, I'll open it up, get some water. And I got a couple packets of my favorite instant coffee. This is uh, Jiva, they make Jiva cubes, but this is the Jiva powder. Let's give this some juice. That'll turn into a blue flame once it's going good. There we go. That sounds a little more like a stove. Woo. Try not to get this water on me. I do have my hard shells back on, as you can see. I got plenty of layers on. I got sweatpants over top of my hiking pants that I bought yesterday at Walmart. Um, and I have my military fleece over top of my outdoor vitals. Um, puffy synthetic jacket so normally I would not hike in this much but I don't know I'm going to be going fast and light so I'll make that decision later but for right now get that there actually let's put the windscreen on to increase the efficiency good enough get a lid on to increase the efficiency even more and there we go I'll just pump this bottle every once in a while. Actually, for a cup of coffee, I probably won't have to touch it at all. I'll just let it heat up, and next thing you know, I'll have a hot cup of coffee. <sighs> I'm feeling pretty good. That'll make me feel even better. And then I'll pack up my, um, here, I'll show you. In my pack is another pack. my total pack it's called I believe yep uh, I like to use this for travel as well when I go on an airplane or whatnot but this guy squashes down pretty small so I brought him with me and I'll load him up with uh, I've been doing dehydrated meals backpacker meals like I showed yesterday but I brought one emery I just had it laying around and the nice thing about these is they don't require any they're heavy but they don't require any extra water so i'm going to take this as lunch up there for now i think i'm just going to eat some snacks maybe a granola bar or something like that but anyway all right so now all i got to do is uh wait for this coffee it'll be warmed up in no time oh yeah 
There we go. Nice hot cup of coffee. Even mixed in. I did two packets of Jiva and like a <laughs> half a liter of water. So it's not going to be the strongest coffee in the world, but it'll get me hydrated. And I even had these left over from another MRE. It's just one thing of creamer and some sugar. So I'll enjoy this. Tastes pretty good. <sighs> Soak in the sights a little bit. I'll throw on that little day pack and we'll get after it. All right, coffee was good. Mini pack is packed up. Pop that guy on. Ah. Feels a little better than the big old pack I had yesterday, that's for sure. I got the, uh, well, you can see it's starting to snow now, as was forecasted. So, tarp should be all right in this configuration. Um, and I put the bug net up just to keep anything else out of there and wouldn't want my uh, quilt or anything to blow out. Main pack is down there. And we'll just leave the stove out, should be good. The uh, hiking poles, <laughs> my debacle yesterday, I don't know. But I'm not going with weight on my back, not much at least, or snowshoes. So I'm just going to deal with those when I get home. I don't really know what's going on there. I mean, I know I overextended it, but... Now I'm not quite sure how I'll reattach those, but that's no big deal. If it was uh, different conditions, maybe I'd put some time into that, but I'm not worried about it. We'll go without the poles. Uh, there's the fire pit from last night. You can see I melted through the snow pretty good. So it's probably only six to eight inches around here, um, which is not too bad. So we'll see how it is. But yeah, we're going to leave camp at this point. I hung my food up over there. Um, and I got, you know, some food with me. I'm going to go down to the stream here and grab myself some water um, to keep me hydrated. And we'll start making our way towards some summits here. So, time to get some water. Now, when I first started hiking in the winter, I certainly have used water filters just like you would in the summer. Uh, the downside of them is you really have to be careful to keep it warm. So I would keep it on my body or something like that. Um, because if the water filter freezes, obviously the water's not gonna flow. But more importantly, once a water filter freezes, you pretty much gotta throw it out, it's done. Because the water expands, it cracks the membrane in there, and then, well, you're not actually filtering anymore. So that can be a little stressful and a little bit of a pain. But uh, on my last video or two, I did my military surplus backpacking trip. And I, just to go with the theme, went with the chemical treatment. I got some little um, water purification tablets on that trip. So I don't know why I didn't start doing this sooner over the years, but Real simple, don't have to worry about this freezing. This is uh, tetraglycine hydro something. <laughs> um, two of these little tiny smaller than the Tic Tac pills in here, two of those will do a liter and just let it sit for half an hour and the water's treated and you're good to go. So as long as I don't lose that bottle, I'm fine. So I brought both of my water bottles with me. I'm gonna fill those up. Um, once we leave the stream behind and start ascending the mountain, allegedly there's a spring near, near the summit up there, but I'm not relying on that. So I'm just going to fill up water here and perhaps, um, you know, later on before I completely leave the brook, which we're going to follow for a little bit more. But right now I'm just going to dip in, get some icy cold water. I'm going to use this Nalgene because it's a little easier to dip in with this because it has the uh the attached lid and i'll just fill this up there we go so we'll let those sit and dissolve and within half an hour i'll have some drinking water
finally leaving the brook behind. You can hear it a little bit in the distance to my left. But I've got what looks to definitely be a, I would say that's a moose print. But then this looks to be, well, there's another moose. Is that, is that just a huge moose? At first I was thinking maybe a bear. But, nope, that is some big old moose tracks there. In addition to my rabbit friends. Yeah, there you can see them dragging along there. Some rabbits crossing. And then it disappeared. I don't know where he turned, oh, he went up that way. All right, we got some moose activity. That's one animal I've never seen in the wild. I've been to New Hampshire decent amount of times and on solo trips that's when I usually see the most animals but never seen a moose those were some good looking tracks anyway we'll just keep on keeping on it looks like we're going downhill now a little bit we're just doing a little up and down until we get to Killback Pond <sighs> and the snow keeps coming down Much like yesterday, couldn't tell you where the trail is. Now I do have a paper map and a compass and my GPS track says I'm close to it, but uh, this definitely is not it. <laughs> I don't think a trail will be going through here, but I'm basically just following my GPS breadcrumbs that I made before I came up in this general direction, but definitely not looking forward to uh, I have a feeling I'll be night hiking out just because the days are so short. Um, if I do these summits, I'm pretty sure it'd be dark at night. So got spare batteries and a USB charger for my GPS. Like I said, I got the map and stuff and luckily I'll be able to follow my own footprints out as long as it doesn't sm uh, snow too much. But I'm just staying hydrated. Got some electrolyte mix in my water there and uh, it's slow going. I'm glad I don't have the pack on for this. Um, that speed me up a little bit, but it's still, it's pretty slow, but I'm just going to try to keep a heading and stick on it in this direction. Thankfully, I'm back on track, found the trail as well as a little landmark. So this is Rogers Ledge tent site, apparently, and uh, forest protection area. So you can't camp anywhere within a quarter mile of the actual tent site here, which I won't be doing. But if you're interested in coming out here, there is this option as well as, well, really in the whites, you can camp wherever you want as long as it's not a forest protection area. You just have to be uh, a couple hundred feet from the trail or water and you're good to go. Um, but there is an actual tent site at Unknown Pond from what I read there's no like platforms or anything it's just there's a semi-reliable spring there apparently for water uh, I don't think there's a caretaker or anything like that it's really just kind of a uh, marked known good camping area where I was planning to go yesterday but that's all right back on the consolidated trail although I'm having some sections with uh, kind of as you can see walking in some drainage so this is ice here I got to be careful I do have some micro spikes in my little pack there, which are little traction devices, basically just some metal spikes on some rubber uh, that stretch over my boots. I'm not gonna put them on if I don't have to. Oh, I got a little snow on the lens there. Not gonna put those on if I don't have to because if you really, if you're not on actual ice and you're just walking on snow, they start to do what's called snowballing. This, uh, this wet, heavy snow, this isn't that wet or heavy, but Basically, this is actually pretty dry snow, but snow in general tends to ball up on the bottom of the spikes and then you end up with like snowballs under your feet. It's very unstable. So I'm going to keep those off unless I really need them if it's truly some, some blue ice conditions. But at least we found the trail again. And I just have to be careful not to, you know, I'm almost in like a little drainage or a brook and, uh, don't want to 
accidentally put my ankle in anything, but when I come off the trail, it gets a little deep. So I'm proceeding carefully. I didn't leave camp until oh, 10 something, because I didn't get up out of the hammock till 8.30. So after hanging out, I got a, a late start on a short day. It's not the smartest thing in the world, but it's all right. For right now, I'll just enjoy the snow. I think it's supposed to snow all day. All right, one landmark to another. Feeling good. Rogers Ledge is that way. Unknown Pond, 2.1 miles, is this way. So we're gonna hang a left. We'll see if uh, this trail is any more used. I think this whole area is not that well used. Um, no blazes to speak of, which is uh, combined with the fact that everything's covered in snow. And I think that this is just a not very well used trail because I mean, there's a lot of times where there's these small saplings and stuff right in the middle of the trail, which combined with the snow really makes it, me at least, uh, makes me second guess if I'm on the trail or not. So probably glad that I didn't night hike in yesterday to find this campsite. Um, it probably would have been a pain. Uh, anytime you hike at night with a headlamp, it always adds a little bit of disorientation. Um, and combined with these conditions, it probably would, would have been a little tough and really slow. So I wanted to sleep at the pine, but probably did the right thing yesterday. Um, but anyway, we're going to head down here, see if it's any more uh, obvious, the trail. And that'll get me to Unknown Pond uh, in two miles. And then, well, actually before that, it'll be Killbeck. This trail is uh, a little tough to follow, too. I'm pretty sure I'm on it. According to my GPS, I'm close. But got some down trees in the way and whatnot uh, to navigate through somehow here. Thankfully, I have a smaller pack, so I can squeeze through this without shredding my gear. There we go. I've shed a couple layers and definitely heating up from navigating this stuff. Oh yeah, this is definitely the trail. But yeah, this is a remote one. And unfortunately, it is 12 something. Closing in on one o'clock somehow. I don't know what's gonna happen here. Like I said, either way, I'll be walking back in the dark, but do I just do the pond? Do I do the summit? I don't know. I am getting hungry. I know I probably won't be waiting until the summit to eat my breakfast, although I got some uh, some other snacks. I have the main emery, the breakfast emery I haven't opened up yet. But uh, I do have some crackers from a previous emery back there and some cheese spread warming up in my pocket. I'm looking forward to that. So I think as soon as I find a good place to sit down, Gonna do that and get some calories in me. <sighs> My head's eating up, but unfortunately I don't want to get wet, so we'll keep the hood up and keep trudging through this snow and look for a snack spot. This will work. Apparently, Killback Pond. And uh, I'm gonna call it a snack spot. What I really should probably do is eat lunch, but I'm still gonna hold off on that. So, let's see if I can make a seat out of this. Should have brought my little sip pad with me, I guess, but that's all right. There we go. Gore-Tex pants are serving me well. I put my hat back on now that I'm sitting. Here's my vacuum sealed MRE crackers. Crack these open. 
didn't have these on my last trip and I was actually surprisingly looking forward to them in all their dry glory. Squeeze on some cheese, get some calories in me. This is actually the first thing I've eaten today. Hmm. That's good. The snow is, uh, as I try to talk with a mouthful of crackers, snow is pretty steady all day, just about since we left. But it's making everything pretty. So I'm going to eat my crackers, and I guess we got another mile or something to go, and we'll get to uh, Unknown Pond, and we'll check that out, see what that looks like. Killback looks pretty cool. So I'm going to have my snack, hydrate some more, soak it in, and just relax a little bit. And we'll get back at it on to the next pond. Once again, couldn't tell you where the trail is. It's a little while after Kilbeck Pond. At one point, there was actually a couple yellow blazes, but um, it was only for a short section of trail and then it went away. But not now. I do know though, from looking at the topo, we gotta get over this hump. So I guess we're finally actually gonna do some legit uphill. Thankfully, I'm not digging in too much right now, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, I guess we're just going straight up this. In this general direction. On the Kilkenny Ridge Trail. It doesn't look... Well, this might work. Really gotta watch out for the ankles. In between some of these rocks and stuff. But, yeah, it's about what we got going on now. Actually doing some steep stuff for once. <sighs> I guess we'll see what's on the other side. There are some deep drifts. Definitely slow me down, but snowshoes take a lot more energy. They slow you down too, so it might be a wash, but either way, I'm definitely not the fastest hiker in the world today. I'm also running out of daylight, but it's been overcast all day. <sighs> to be honest, I think it's the same situation I had in the White Mountains. I guess it was a year ago when I was playing with that stove a lot on that video. Um, you know, it gets to a point, how much do you want to push a summit if it's socked in? with snow squalls and clouds and everything. In my case though, regardless of that, it's uh, it's after two o'clock now going on three. Just was, you know, been enjoying the sights and everything, but timing wise, I mean, sunset's not that far after four. Really don't think there's any way I'm getting to the top of the horn or any of those summits up there in time. But my main goal for this trip was to check the unknown pond out. So luckily I think we can get there definitely and still have eh, some dim daylight, some overcast daylight, but something. But right now I need to focus on where the trail is. I think that's why it's getting so deep. I must've came off of it. <sighs> One thing's for sure though, this snowfall is picking up. Now, the flakes are getting bigger. I'm sure you've heard before that means it's going to stop soon. But in my case, it's been uh, bigger flakes for a little while now. And either way, it's building up pretty good. <sighs> yep, I take it back. Probably should have snowshoes. Not gonna lie, this is tough. I'm just constantly checking the GPS to see if I'm on the trail or not. I saw maybe two more yellow blazes in the last hour or so. Going super slow. <laughs> not gonna try to hide it. It's, uh, it is deep snow. You know, I go back and forth on the snowshoe decision, but even if I had snowshoes, that would be almost just as slow as this. It's just... This is actually a good little section here, but drifts and whatnot, and then 
check the map, see where the trail is, apparently to my right, uh, and keep going. It is 20 minutes till sunset, and uh, I'm here four miles in, going about a mile per hour as I sink in further. Um, so it's going to be a dark and slow trudge out. Good news is, of course, that I can follow my tracks out, so I won't have to spend the time second guessing where I am trail wise or where I'm going and also negotiating obstacles and stuff. I can follow my tracks out. Um, like I was saying earlier, it is looking pretty socked in, but hopefully we'll get up to the pond soon. And uh, I think I should be within a quarter mile, I hope now. And we'll see what that looks like. I mean, I'm just looking forward to the goal of saying I made it to the pond. There's really no safety reason to not push on. I'm all about having a turnaround time, but um, you know, it's not dangerous weather. I have supplies with me, food, lighting, batteries, stuff like that to get myself out of here. And I have hiked in the dark before, so while it's less than ideal, I'll be okay. So for that reason, I'm gonna keep pushing, even though I think we might be seeing this pond in the in the twilight or maybe even moonlight, but we'll see. Pond should be right over here. Look at the size of these moose tracks. Lots of moose activity. I haven't seen any droppings, but a ton of hoof prints around here as we approach the pond. Now, it would be cool, I don't want to jinx it, but it would be cool if I actually saw something across the pond. You never know. It is, you know, that time of, time of night, time of day, when you might get some activity. But we'll see. In fact, I think I'll just follow the moose's tracks here. I'm just making it a little easier to walk. I see an opening. I can't really tell where the pond begins. <laughs> Oops, as I slip down. I don't know how frozen over it is, but I'll be careful. There it is. And that there is the horn. I don't see any animals out there. But this is it. So, definitely no way I'm getting there today. I'm not even going to attempt it, and I wouldn't see much from up there. I'll save that for a summer trip, I guess. But that's the horn. And then you continue past that a little ways on the ridge up there, and you get to Mount Cabo, or however you say it. Uh, I know S-A-B-O-T is Sabo in French, so most stuff is French around here. I'm assuming that's the correct pronunciation. More snow on the lens there. I don't know what it is about standing on a pond in the winter that makes you want to whisper, but I always seem to do that. But this is it. This is what we came for. So at this point, I still have some water, which is good, because there's no getting through to that water underneath of there. And uh, I'm going to have my MRE. It's tucked away in here. So... I've been just eating some random snacks. I even I haven't opened my actual MRE, so eh, I'll decide if I want to heat that up or eat the snacks out of it or what I want to do. Um, I'll soak this in for a little bit. As much as I can see as it starts to get dark. Luckily there is a pretty, it's not a full moon, but it's close. I've had some decent moonlight last night, so that should help me get out of here and I got the headlamp. So I'll hydrate eat some food, relax a little bit, and then get back on the trail. I am looking forward to the um, mental release or relaxation, if you will, of 
not having to navigate as much and just follow my tracks. So that's what I do. That's what I'll do. Because it is uh, going to be dark soon. Dark soon. Dark soon. Dark soon. All right. Here we go. Headlamp is on. Now, normally I could probably get by on just the moonlight for a while, but I really don't want to mess up my footing. So, the battery pack on this headlamp is pretty good. So, I'm going to go ahead and use it on low. Now, it'll get me by. One downside is I went to, uh, pack my pack up after I had some of my MRE and I realized that my other water bottle my 40 below one this is my Nalgene must have popped out so I'm thankful for the tracks because although a lot of what I did was off trail and bushwhacking um, I'll follow these tracks and hopefully stumble upon my water bottle because I do like that 40 below bottle but anyway that's what I'm doing, so just retracing my steps, looking for my water bottle, and making my way back to base camp. A handful of hours later, it is still snowing. I'm still following my tracks. Uh, somehow or another, it's like eh, 8 o'clock, after 8 o'clock actually. And uh, something told me to look at my GPS as I was following my tracks here. I even put a stick out to show me where my uh, camp is so that I know where to turn off so I don't overshoot it. And uh, well, <laughs> maybe that stick wasn't obvious enough because when I looked at my GPS it says that I... Uh, overshot my campsite by like a quarter mile so i'm gonna double back maybe get to camp uh within the next 15 minutes or so <laughs> but i am very tired and very hungry <sighs> i'm warm from all the moving uh, i still got all my other layers in the pack but yeah that's about where i'm at i'm gonna turn around head back quarter mile i set a proximity alarm on my gps so uh that should beep when I get within a few hundred yards of my turn off. I don't know how I missed that, but I did. So, that's what it is right now. We'll get back there and get some food going, that is for sure. Alright. Make sure to grab my water bottle this time. Look at the coating of snow on that tarp. That's a good couple inches on there. But the hammock itself is uh, nice and dry, nice and protected. So I'll beat that snow off of there and probably retension the tarp. But uh, as you can tell, I am back at camp. Feels good to be home. It's the funny thing about uh, backpacking. A lot of times when you set up camp, you get to a spot like I did yesterday. I'm kind of hesitant, don't know if it's the right spot, feels kind of weird. And then after a couple meals and sleeping there, <laughs> next thing you know, feels like home. And uh, well, this is just a random spot in the middle of the woods, but to me, it's home and it feels good to be back. So. My agenda right now, I am tired and hungry. I am starving. Uh, never ate the main entree from my MRE. I think I'm gonna save that for breakfast tomorrow. I'm gonna have my biscuits and gravy, which should have been my breakfast this morning. Uh, I'm gonna have that for dinner. So my agenda is basically food, fire, sleep. And we'll be ready for another day. Good morning everyone, lovely morning indeed, there's a little break in the clouds right now, some snow still coming down, actually I think 
Yeah, these are some biggest flakes I've seen yet, actually. It's been snowing on and off since I got up. Um, I think it was like 20 degrees or so when I last checked, maybe 22. So not bad at all. Feels pretty good. I got my fire going here. Uh, kind of died down a little bit as I was doing chores. One thing I did pick up just on a, on a whim when I was buying my pants at Walmart was this stuff I saw in the camping section called Instafire. Apparently it was shown on Shark Tank. But it's like little powdered kind of consistency. Almost looks like sawdust or Pop Rocks actually. Um, but it's supposed to uh, light wet wood, which is usually a problem for me. Um, having damp wood, especially in the winter like this. With all these big flakes coming down. Um, burns and winds up to 30 miles per hour. I haven't been able to test that. But um, you just sprinkle like an eighth of a cup on there. It says it does four fires. Um, it was like a buck a bag. So since I've been here, I actually have discovered a cache of uh, birch trees that were shedding some bark, which is an awesome natural uh, natural fire starter. This stuff is great, although it is a little smoky and um, burns a little smelly, but this will get a fire kicked off real good. But since I had this, and before I discovered that, I used this so far for um, all my fires thus far. And I think I'm going to throw a little on here just to kick this back up. Just a little sprinkle. I got some larger logs in there now. There we go. Um, that I've been slowly drying out. And uh, this morning I'm pretty much just hanging out, enjoying myself, taking my time. We'll get back to the vehicle today in the parking lot at the fish hatchery. But um, I'm not in a super rush, I'm just having fun. I got my MRE, if I look like I've gained weight, I got a bunch of stuff in here to keep warm, some cab camera batteries and um, my whole MRE packet. Um, I got maple sausage and uh, a muffin top, they call it, but it pretty much looks kind of like a pancake. My strategy is cut it in half and make a little sandwich out of it. So I'm probably going to do that. I already had some coffee. I already went down and got some water from the stream. And I got that uh, being treated right now, so I should be able to drink that soon. And yeah, that's about it. Just hanging out here and enjoying the woods before I uh, schlep back out the same way I came. And um, we'll see how it looks with the extra snow. I will say too, speaking of snow, push this out. Last night we had all that snow on there. I dumped it all off. And then it rebuilt up to about this thickness again, or the same thickness I had last night. I think I dumped this off at least two or three times so far. So it's, uh, we've been getting some inches. It's uh, completely covered again. And uh, speaking of that, a little pro tip for you, or not so pro tip. Um, if there's gonna be a bunch of snow, Make sure you don't leave any gear out that uh, is small or important because remember my, well, I got to fix them at home, but my hiking poles, I should have, I leaned one up against the tree. I, I left one apparently on the ground somewhere. I have no idea where it is. So I think I may have life, lost a, a hiking pole, unfortunately. And I really did uh, like those sea knock poles, assuming I can repair them. But I'm going to poke around some more, but I've been looking. It's like searching for a needle in a haystack, uh, poking around with a stick, and I keep thinking I find it, and then it's just more sticks underneath the snow. So worst case scenario, I do want to come back here to do those summits, the horn and whatnot, in warmer climate. I have this GPS tagged. I'm pretty much in the middle of nowhere. The chance of somebody else coming to this exact spot is pretty slim. So if I ever come back to Unknown Pond, I'll have to hit my GPS coordinates up and uh, in the summer and take a look around for my hiking pole. As of right now, I don't think it's coming back, but that's all right. So got my hammock over there and uh, some breakfast on the way, a nice little fire. Might have to stoke that a little more, throw some more wood on it and just gonna relax and have some breakfast. All right. Got my Ziploc bag, AKA my plate or workstation. MRE, got the meal in there. This is the heating couch. Been sitting while I did some chores for a little bit. I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. Came with some table syrup and 
There's my maple muffin top. Bench made bug out knife here, nice and light. A good size blade. Most of the tasks that I'm dealing with. I think I'm gonna take my gloves off. Like I said, it's in the 20s, it's not terribly cold. So I'll be alright with these off for a little bit. At least it's not negative 20. Been up here sometimes when it's negative 20, and I think by now my hands would feel like they were slammed in a car door from having the glove off, but it's relatively warm right now. So there's my muffin top. And actually, I do have this little plastic knife, but I think I'm going to use the precision of the bug out to try to cut this guy open properly. So instead of eating this like a snack or a side dish, I'm going to carefully fillet it in half. Some of them are um, thicker than others. This one's probably been smushed in my pack. So it's a little thin. But I think that'll do the trick right there. Table syrup, which is rapidly cooling down. And then these MREs. Now, um, I did a video on, uh, it was called the, the Right Peak B-47 Bomber video um, that I have linked above where I went over MREs pretty extensively. So I won't get into that, but basically you have a little heating element. You add some water and it starts boiling the water, heats up your food. And this sausage actually, yep, I can feel the heat already, which is awesome. So I'm gonna open him up. I know it looks like dog food, but I've had this before and I actually quite like it. I just gotta be quick because the air temp out here is rapidly cooling everything down. syrup on top pure sugar get my calories for the hike out I suppose I definitely didn't cut this properly that is a thin a thin top but let's see all right McGriddle sandwich oh yeah tastes better than it looks I promise Mm. some protein some carbs some dripping syrup I guess you wouldn't want to do this the night before you uh, camp it's going to be some bear bait around here mm. alright well that's darn good I'm going to eat this before it gets down to uh, frozen again and then I'll go over here, deal with the hammock set up, get all that snow off the tarp, and I guess start packing up eventually, but <sighs> meal time now. All right, time to break down my trusty friend for the last couple days, few days. Uh, it's done well. Unfortunately, compared to a warmer weather trip, I haven't honestly, you can configure this into a, um, uh, like a chair mode. You pull the back end up and, and this folds down, almost like a floating lazy boy. Um, but just because how cold it is and I don't want to take these boots off when I don't have to and all that, uh, I haven't really had the pleasure of sitting in it much, but sleeping in it was good. Now the, um, like I mentioned before, the, the pad is rated down to 20. I definitely took it past that. Um, but I was wearing some layers of clothing and I had a zero degree uh, down hammock gear bag uh, quilt in there with me. But it's been good. The tarp has kept me dry. That is the one made by Amok, specifically designed for coverage on this. And it's done good. I've had no issues at all. So as a winter hammock, if the mileage is lower, I would definitely do this again. Just like summer, this is a heavier setup. It's a little more luxury. Um, if the terrain is a little too crazy, um, I would probably opt for something lighter. But when it comes to comfort, I love this thing. So it's done well. But right now, it is time to, I uh, think, knock the snow off of this for the fourth or fifth time or whatever it's been. So that's what I'm going to do. And 
and uh, once that's done, I'll take the hammock down, pack it into itself. It has a attached uh, stuff sack, and uh, oh, that's some heavy snow. And uh, then I'll pack up and start heading out. It's like mm, after one o'clock. I've really been kind of hanging out and relaxing and enjoying myself. So um, that should put me back to the car just before dark, kind of the way I showed up here. But yep. There we go. All right. Reluctantly, it's time to go. Break her down. There's the Jeep. And as seems to be the theme for this video, I'm hitting my target right, right at sunset. Thinking about a minute before or a minute after. One minute after. But here I am. I'm back on it, or back at it. The start point, that is. So, feels pretty good. Beautiful day. Everything went well, had some good time in the woods. But right now, I'm gonna get this pack off. Pretty sure that I've effectively burned off that lovely breakfast sandwich, MRE style that I had earlier. So I'm gonna get the hard shell off, probably leave the boots on, hop in the vehicle, head towards North Conway, and uh, replace some calories, because I am hungry. But there you have it. Northern White Mountains, unknown pond. Didn't quite hit any summits, but we'll be back for that someday, I'm sure. <sighs> but I'm feeling good about it. Three days of solid, uh, solid hiking and trudging through the snow. I'm pretty happy. So thumbs up to uh, <laughs> the unknown pond. But right now, I'm about ready to wind down. So till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time.